The KR-67 Ifrit is a multi-role fighter bomber with emphasis on flexibility and high payload capacity. Despite its large airframe, the Ifrit's pitch vectoring twin-engine design allows for surprising maneuverability and responsive acceleration. These features create an expensive but versatile platform that can deal with most threats, but remains outclassed by specialized airframes in their respective elements. With large, flat wing surfaces and abundant hardpoints, the Ifrit carries a lot of mass for its size and shape. Twin afterburners aren't just a marketing tagline, they are an outright essential when performing evasive maneuvers. This added thrust keeps the nose responsive and allows for some impressive S-turns as well as ground-close maneuvering, but all this power can be very deceiving to a new pilot. The uninitiated might look at a tank and think that something that big and powerful must do great off-road, and then be surprised to see an M1 Abrams sunk up to its turret in mud. In much the same way, the Ifrit's engines provide the illusion of invulnerability and bottomless power to brute force your way out of hairpin turns or spectacular Top Gun-style Cobra maneuvers. The truth, much like the Abrams tank, is that this monster sinks through turns like a tank through mud. Carve that nose in too deep, and watch its belly plow air like a dump truck as all your momentum bleeds away. Sure, you can hit an evasive turn and burn every bit as hard as a revoker, but it only works two or three times before that stall warning hits like the bottom of a mud hole, and you realize just how stuck you are as a smaller, faster opponent literally flies circles around your lumbering bulk. The Ifrit does not like to be thrown around like a cheap interceptor. It likes to go in fast and get out before things get dirty. A broad fuselage and multitude of hardpoints make the Ifrit highly utilitarian in nature, but not to the point of being the only or even the best option. The Ifrit's payload limits are generous, but its ordnance release system can only accommodate medium and large strike packages. The internal 37mm autocannon is ideal for ground attack, but struggles in air-to-air -air applications, though any direct hit is devastating. The Efrit's real strength is its ranged attack and heavy strike capabilities. The emphasis on stealth in the Efrit's design makes it harder for radar-guided missiles to target, and surprisingly easy for attentive pilots to notch or jam incoming threats. Though, it's not stealthy enough to avoid detection, especially from AWACS and short-range radar. The Ifrit is absolutely terrifying in its air-to-air -air role, where pilots can choose between the S-3 and Scythe, two of the most powerful air combat missiles in the game. The Ifrit carries a massive missile magazine, allowing it more freedom to take risky shots or suppress threats at longer range. A single Ifrit fitted with all S-3 missiles can effectively counteract more than a dozen incoming cruise missiles at one time, a task that makes Medusa pilots sweat quietly into their seats. In a ground-focused role, the Ifrit can fit a wide selection of gravity bombs alongside the AGM-68. This means that pilots are choosing between higher damage potential at short range or less damage potential at longer range. Bunker Buster and GPO-500 Ordnance makes the Ifrit well-suited to striking large facilities or underground fortifications, while Glide Bombs and GPO-250 kits provide excellent anti-vehicle packages. Balanced configurations are easy to set up, allowing the Ifrit to effectively operate in both ground strike and air attack roles on the same mission. These setups do reduce the effective relevant magazine for each task, so they should be treated carefully. The Ifrit is not a sturdy airframe, and should avoid flying alone, if at all possible. The Ifrit is not a dogfighter, and only bears a maneuvering advantage along the pitch axis for a few turns before it bleeds momentum and needs time to recover. This means that close combat against interceptors is a losing prospect where the Ifrit tends to lose rate fights and struggles to hold momentum through sustained hard turns. 
The Ifrit's twin afterburning engines create a tremendous vulnerability to thermal tracking, and all but requires a pilot to cut thrust before dumping flares and braking hard. These maneuvers kill the Ifrit's momentum even more, making it difficult to run from close quarter engagements, even with its massive acceleration advantage. An Ifrit without range advantage has no real defense but luck. Stealth designs often compromise armor to get better radar deflection, and the Ifrit is no exception. The airframe is quite agile for its size, and vulnerable to all vehicle-mounted ballistics, including the lighter machine guns. On several occasions, it has been brought down by the meager IRM-S1, so missile threats are not to be ignored. Once the Ifrit has been sighted, it becomes increasingly vulnerable. The Ifrit is the best choice for unknown or highly dynamic mission profiles where you aren't sure where to be or what to have. Generally speaking, if you know what target you want to strike, then you know which specialized aircraft is best for that specific kill. This makes the Ifrit a poor choice for the tip of the spear, but an ideal choice as a reserve, support, or escort fighter. It also does well in core defensive roles and rapid response tasking. Pilots flying the Ifrit should note that the aircraft is made for a boom and zoom flight style, and is at its strongest when flying at transonic speeds. Whether using bombs or missiles, clean lines in and out of the kill box are essential when striking ground targets, and distance is critical when attacking other aircraft. The Ifrit does not handle well in low flight, and is weak to respond on the yaw axis. It can skim the ground effectively in a straight line, but struggles to track sideways without committing to a roll and pull. Pilots attacking an Ifrit can exploit its poor energy retention during maneuvers, its extreme vulnerability to thermal attack, and its weak armor. The best way to do this is with an interceptor, but Surprise is also effective when flying light aircraft. The IRM-S1 missile can secure a kill against this platform, making the Chicane helicopter a nasty threat up close, and remarkably easy to trip over during low flight. Pilots looking to fly the Ifrit need to think in straight lines. Get in and get out quick. Prefer attacks from a greater distance and avoid being tricked into a kill box yourself. When possible, fly with friends, preferably in the most focused configuration that you can, mostly air, or mostly ground. Avoid close contact with the revoker. You have more missiles than it does, so use them. Thermal missiles are your worst nightmare. Use terrain if you can, but remember to cut throttle and brake hard if not. Remember that a multi-role fighter is a jack-of-all-trades and a master of none. Don't get stuck competing against a specialist in their element or you will probably lose. Play to your greatest strength by supporting the allies on the map. The Ifrit is fast and carries a long stick, so you should be smacking people with it from outside their reach whenever possible. When setting up a bomb run, be sure that local air defense is handled at range or by another ally. A single S-1 missile can kill the Ifrit, so be careful with anything that fires thermal. That's all I have for today. Catch you all later.